Hello everyone, I'm Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study, giving you this week's update. And thousands of you have been flocking back to the app uh, because of Omicron and the increased fears that's bringing with the huge numbers of cases. And that's good news for the data because we need everyone to be logging so that we can tell if there are new symptoms uh, coming along or uh, exactly how it's competing with Delta. And we've added a feature into the app to allow you to report whether you've got Omicron or Delta, which will give you the first uh, hand accounts of when things are really happening. So uh, we've got lots to discuss, so let's get on and look at the data. So the daily cases are running around 83,000, which is uh, up just a fraction on last week, but pretty flat really, given our confidence intervals. And the uh, double vaccinated rate of this is around, still around this 30% mark, which is about 24,000 new cases a day. That means about one in 59, one in 60 people have COVID at the moment, which is still really, really high. Uh, and the only good news is that the COVID deaths are not going up. Uh, they are on average around 721 for the week, which is a little bit lower than last week, which is good news, but still too high. Hospitalizations around 713 um, a day on average. That's slightly down, uh, as is the numbers on ventilators around 901. And let's look now at the age groups because we can see uh, from this graph that the cases and ages are still lower than the peak, uh, but have shown signs of an increase in the last uh, week. It does go up and down a bit, seems to fluctuate a lot. Uh, the parental age, 35 to 55, is also increasing slowly, um, as is the 18 to 35 year olds, but race, but not fast. The good news here are, are when you look at the red and the purple lines as the older age groups are uh, look as if they're actually declining slightly. Uh, and these are the ones who are most at risk of uh, serious infection. So that is uh, a little bit of good news at the moment. And that should certainly buy us some time. Now, let's have a look at the regions where we can see from the graph that uh, Scotland is still doing pretty well uh, and low. London is still increasing, although not at the rate it was. Uh, and the southeast of England is also uh, seeing some of the highest levels uh, this year. Uh, and Wales is also going up. Not really sure why this is, uh, as all the other regions are fairly low. And there's a clear difference between Scotland and Wales. Uh, one's at the top, one's at the bottom and yet both have stricter uh, regulations. Probably showing that it's very com it's a complex business. There isn't one thing like masks that makes a huge difference. It's a combination of many factors together, and it's very dangerous to just draw anecdotes from looking at one country or region about uh, what's working and what isn't. And we can see this more clearly when we look at the international scene. We can see most countries in Europe still uh, going up or uh, showing high levels. And if we look at the graph as compared to what we saw last week, we can see that Austria, which was um, doing the worst, uh, has had quite a major reduction because they've had uh, a really severe national lockdown, showing that does work when it's extreme. And uh, the Netherlands and Belgium have at least flattened off at those peaks. Uh, we're seeing other countries still uh, creeping up, like Germany and, and Denmark, uh, United States uh, as well. Now, um, France is also going up um, at a, a rate that's a little bit concerning, but we uh, are still seeing relatively low low rates in uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, Sweden. So uh, that's a bit of good news uh, for those countries that uh, are generally warmer, have, have had uh, tighter restrictions, uh, no major uh, wave there so far. And interesting to look at South Africa here. So all the talk on Omicron about South Africa, but the uh, actual figures relative to ours are uh, much lower. Of course, some of that could be due to uh, 
patches in reporting, but still uh, interesting to look at. Um, of course, Omicron is now a worry internationally. Lots of restrictions of travel into the UK. Um, many people, including myself, think that probably it's a bit late for those now. By the time they uh, get put in place, we've already got lots of Omicron infections here and it just uh, causes extra hassle and economic and uh, personal burdens. So I'm not really uh, in favour of those after the first few weeks when it is reasonable to introduce them. Let's now talk about uh, everyone's uh, least favourite variant, Omicron. We think that in the UK, are just shy of 3% of uh, cases uh, that have, have been root routinely sequenced are, have that variant in them. And this compares to about 4 to 5% in Denmark and over 20% uh, in South Africa. And predictions are, are still very difficult because we don't have sufficient numbers really in the UK over time to know exactly what's happening. So uh, there's a huge caveat over everything we're discussing now. And a lot of it is based on what was going on in South Africa for the last couple of weeks, uh, where uh, the situation is obviously very different uh, to uh, the UK. But um, if we think it's doubling every three days, which is what the UK data show and this graph you can see comes from uh, UK HSA data. Um, that would mean that if nothing else happened and uh, we didn't uh, change any of our behaviors, etc., uh, you could get over 100,000 uh, cases a day uh, by Christmas Day. I think that's unlikely to happen. That's very much a worst case scenario because generally as cases go up, people's behavior changes and that drives uh, these figures down. But it just gives you an idea that it, it, it could well be uh, overtaking Delta, which is currently at 80,000 um, by, by the end of the year. Um, so what we believe is that Omicron is, is being successful because it's much more transmissible than Delta. Estimates vary on that, whether it's just 60% more or it's double. Um, but the R value uh, being quoted is of around two, which is bigger than anything we've seen in any of these waves. I think the biggest one we ever recorded in regionally was about 1.5. So the early signs are that uh, Omicron is more transmissible and also that it seems to escape the vaccines more easily than Delta. Although we really don't know by how much because a lot of the data so far is rather anecdotal. Um, but certainly all the reports so far do suggest that it can uh, break through easier than Delta and so uh, either reinfect people or uh, break through those vaccines. So we do face a, a scenario potentially where uh, the Delta cases, which are still predominantly in unvaccinated people, continue and will have uh, uh, Omicron strains affecting uh, people with uh, vaccines mildly. And this is a potential possibility that uh, we need to be thinking of. Um, certainly, all the reports so far are fairly reassuring in terms of severity that it's certainly not more severe than Delta. It's likely to be milder, but it's very hard to look at those hospital reports in South Africa clearly and, and generalize them to the UK population. So uh, I think we probably have to wait uh, another week until we, we've got a bit more data on that. But that's the sort of current hope at the moment that it is milder, but more uh, transmissible. Now, uh, your data is going to be incredibly important so we can uh, tease this apart and work out what's going on as the situation gets more complicated. Uh, and we need to know how much our vaccines are protecting us and hopefully they will be keeping us out of hospital. Now, let's talk about a few early cases we have got in the UK, uh, courtesy of the Zoe app, because I was uh, approached from, by a gentleman who is a, a regular Zoe user who attended a 60th birthday party gathering with 18 guests and all of them had taken lateral flow tests prior to that gathering, which is a very sensible thing to do. And 
on Sunday they were informed that one of the guests who happened to be a teacher had tested positive and by last week uh, 16 out of 18 had uh, fallen ill in some way uh, and or been tested and caught COVID and they were subsequently uh, informed by NHS test and trace that it was Omicron uh, either uh, probable Omicron and they were waiting to get the genetic um, uh, confirmations. So um, what was interesting is that the symptoms they reported uh, were pretty mild. Uh, quite a few of them had nausea, slight temperature, uh, sore throats, uh, uh, headaches, but nobody was bad enough to really need a doctor or uh, go to hospital. Um, this suggests that in this group of people who are all double or triple vaccinated, uh, they do seem to work to reduce uh, severe illness. But um, it just shows you how easily one person can infect many others uh, in a close situation, which is a worry. So uh, how can we stop it? You know, given if, if it does behave like this more regularly, it's gonna be very difficult to. And I think all we can really do is trying to reduce the speed of which it, it uh, infects people uh, and try and protect the most uh, vulnerable. And I think this is a, a good argument for reducing gathering sizes and super spreader events leading up to Christmas. Um, and, you know, sadly, we had to cancel our Christmas parties at King's and also at Zoe, uh, which upset a lot of us. But if you've got a story to share about uh, Omicron, uh, we'd love to hear it. We've launched a short survey in the app where you can share your experiences with us. And we need more examples of the one I, I gave you above about that, that uh, birthday party, um, because these are going to be critical in the, in the early stages before we get the full picture. And if you've sent off a positive PCR test, uh, Public Health England or HSA UK will contact you if it's confirmed as Omicron by phone, uh, email or uh, SMS. So do watch out for those and you can put that result into the app and tell us what's going on. So keep in touch with us to find out uh, how to do that. Um, remember each area you're in will have a slightly different method of doing that and some parts of the country will be very fast and giving it to others will be slower. Now let's just give you a quick update on the flu and non-virus situation, other virus situation uh, across the UK. Still not much flu around, which is uh, good news. And uh, we're still seeing a lot of other viral infections though, as you can see on the graph, the yellow plot here is going upwards, uh, slightly faster than uh, COVID at the moment. So there's a lot of both of them around and your chances if you do have respiratory symptoms uh, of it being uh, COVID are around one in three, one in four uh, currently. And of course, as we've just heard, a lot of the Omicron symptoms, uh, majority of them are looking like the, uh, a common cold or some other viral illness without any of the classic symptoms. So uh, do be aware of the main ones, which we'll keep you updated on. Uh, Unfortunately, the government haven't yet uh, taken this on board and one of the only governments in the world not to tell its citizens what the symptoms are, but they are runny nose, headache, sneezing, persistent cough and sore throat. They are the top five at the moment. So do keep an eye out for them and try not to infect anyone else, um, particularly with this Omicron around. Um, and all this gets more important as we're in close spaces, it gets colder. I want to tell you a bit about some updated research on our third dose. We'll discuss this more uh, in future, but um, over nearly 600,000 of you gave us details about your booster dose or the third vaccine, as we prefer to call it. Around 4,500 had uh, a positive PCR test after the third dose. Sounds a lot, but it's less than 1% getting reinfected. So that's actually good news. Uh, and uh, when we do the maths and, and calculate it all, it looks like the booster dose is uh, effective, keeping it, maintaining that infection. It's not getting as high rates of protection as we saw 
coming out of Israel, but it's still pretty good. The other good news is that uh, if you're under 55, there's no evidence really of it waning uh, at around before about six or seven months. So no panic there if you uh, aren't able to get a booster. Um, so I think we do need to focus on the over 55s, make sure that everyone is fully protected because it does wane faster in that group. We have no idea yet how this differs for Omicron. This is uh, just talking about Delta. Um, some other news, slightly unrelated, but our COVID study that you participated in showed that 15%, one in six of you have been sleeping better over the last two years, uh, one of the few advantages of the pandemic, and uh, getting longer sleep, better quality sleep. And uh, we published a paper last week showing that uh, an extra half an hour or an hour uh, going to bed earlier has a real benefit on your metabolic health and how you process uh, glucose, uh, et cetera. It, big improvements to your, and this is related to your gut health and potentially your immunity. So going to bed earlier and getting better quality sleep is likely to help you uh, and have a lower sugar spike uh, in the morning with your breakfast. And um, we discuss this in more detail in our podcasts. So um, sleep is really good uh, for everything. So to wrap up, um, even if Omicron is more transmissible, which is looking like uh, it's not causing more severe symptoms, and if these anecdotes we're hearing of people who have been vaccinated and are getting Omicron, uh, it's less uh, of a problem uh, than Delta, although you're more likely to get uh, infected. And um, this is not a reason to be really relaxed about Omicron because it's not just like a cold, you can uh, pass it on to other people and could still uh, kill them. Uh, and we have to st start to figure out how to deal with it, given how infectious it is, change some of our tactics, uh, as we've discussed. But so far, reports of people going to hospital uh, who've been vaccinated with this are uh, really not there. So uh, touch wood, uh, most of the vaccinated people are going to be safe here. Um, but I think it's about the numbers because it, very soon uh, nearly everyone is probably going to have a previous or a current infection uh, with this and that will have consequences. So we want to try and hope to postpone this uh, as much as possible uh, if we can. And the government are, are probably going to introduce some extra measures. I wouldn't be surprised. And uh, I would suggest working more from home and avoiding very large gatherings would be uh, top of my list to introduce. Um, finally, do share the app. Try and get people to share their experiences of Omicron. Really crucial for us in these vital few weeks as we're trying to gather information. And the app, I think, is a wonderful tool to do that. So. Um, remember to like and subscribe our channel and uh, keep an eye on our website and app for details and stay safe and keep logging.